Infernape is definitely my favorite of the Sinnoh starters. In fact, it's up there as one of my favorite fire starters of all time. What was your favorite Sinnoh starter? Today, we're going to be using a fun Infernape strategy I like, utilizing its ability Iron Fist stacked with the Punching Glove item. Now, it's up in the air whether these two actually stack, but either way, the ability to not make contact giving us an immunity to Static and Rocky Helmet and other such abilities is pretty nice regardless. Today's first battle of Infernape is against someone whose name I can't pronounce, and it really shines in this one. So without further ado, I present to you all the Infernape video. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun to my opponent as they lead off with the Cloister. And I let off with my Landorus Ethereum. So we are looking at my Landorus' position. I don't want this thing to help us Shell Smash right off the bat and sweep from my entire team. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and taunt it. And I think we should outspeed. So we do outspeed, go for a taunt, stop them from Shell Smashing, which is fantastic. And hopefully they don't see this coming and go for an Icicle Spear. But they don't. They go in for a Shell Smash, which is fantastic. So... Uh, now they either switch out or they go for, um, or they stay in and attack us with an Icicle Spear. So I'm going to go for a U-turn and get on out of there. They do withdraw, so we could have gone for a Stealth Rocks there, but I didn't want to risk it. I didn't want to risk getting Icicle Speared as they go into whatever that is, the Paldea Champion, the Dragonite. So we break a, a multi-scale with the U-turn, which is fantastic. Uh, let's see how this plays out for us. So, to stop them from going for Dragon Dancers, we're going to have to go into something that not only can scare them, but also maybe force a Terror. So I think I'm going to go Ribombe. And Ribombe is like, seems like a weird one, but I'm going to go for a Stun Spore. I think Stun Spore is a really good option to go for here, so I'm going to go for it. Because they probably Terra Normal anyway, because we're a Fairy type. They withdraw. They don't want the Dragonite to get paralyzed or hit with a Moonblast, and they don't want a Terra just yet either. So they're going to go into whatever that is, the Spacey, which is the Glimora. We go for a Stun Spore and miss. Yeah, unfortunately. Um, so if we assume... Toxic Debris coming our way. We should go into Goldengo. Goldengo seems like a solid one because it's a, the Make It Rain will activate the Toxic Debris. And if they can't Mortal Spin us or Sludge Wave us or Earth Power us because of the Air Balloon. So we float in the Air Balloon. Do they go for a Sludge Wave? They go for a Mortal Spin, which isn't going to work on good old Goldengo, I'm afraid. Uh, so now we simply go for a Make It Rain. I'm looking at the team and I don't see any switching to Make It Rain. So I'm going to go for a Make It Rain real quick. They withdraw. What are they going to go into to take a Make It Rain? Are they going to go Cypher with the Violites? Whatever that is, the uh, Paldea Champion. That's Dragonite, right? Yeah, Dragonite comes in. We go for a Make It Rain. That's going to sting like heck as it nearly takes out the Dragonite, which is fantastic. So even if they've got Fire Punch, we can still take and go for another Make It Rain. They cannot Earthquake because of the Air Balloon. They go for a Scale Shot. Interesting choice gonna pop our air balloon of course also lowers the defenses and raises their speed so i haven't seen scale shot dragonite before that's pretty cool that is pretty cool they are loaded dice as well by the looks of it as they hit four times which is incredibly good for them and um, lowers the defenses though raises their speed they might have expected a switch there expecting like a fire punch but no we go for a make it rain that's going to take out the dragonite in one clean hit so there we go dragonite is down however now they can bring in their cloister and shell smash all over our faces which is not what we wanted. In comes whatever that is, the Spacey, which is, of course, the Glimora. They're probably thinking, yeah, let's go for an Earth Power right now. I'm going to go for a Make It Rain again. I think even at minus two, it's still going to do a lot of damage to the Glimora as it nearly takes them down, which is fantastic. Um, they can simply go for an Earth Power here, though, which they have done. And nearly take us out. But we outspeed them, so it's not the end of the world. Now, here's the thing. I want to get something else in here. I'd rather not, you know... I think, ah oh no, screw it, I'm going to go for a Make It Rain again. There we go, take out the Glimora, why not? The Glimora goes down, Sticky Webs aren't up yet. We should probably get them up. So they sent out the Curem Black. Okay, this thing wants to Dragon Dance all over my face, so be it. You know what, we're going to go Ribombe and we're going to Stun Spore this thing in the face. So we'll go ahead and switch out. Because Curem Black is not an electric type, as, as much as people like to think it is. It's still Dragon and Ice, so it can be paralyzed. So they go for a Fusion Bolt, which is definitely going to sting my Ribombe, just a little bit. There we go. And uh, we just go for a... No, I think Sticky Webs are more important, to be honest with you. I don't think they stay in anyway. They go... They do stay in. Ooh, nice. So we go for a Sticky Webs. They go for a Fusion Bolt again, which is going to take us out, so that's fine. That's absolutely fine. So I'm looking at this Fusion Bolt spam thing and I'm thinking, are they Banded? Banded would have taken me down to Sash there, wouldn't it? 100% would have taken me down to Sash. 
So what do we do? I think we could go into Landorus and go for a Stealth Rock. That could be useful for the Cypher and breaking the potential Sash on the Cloister. I'm also leaning towards Rotom, so I'm going to go Rotom and we're going to burn this thing. So Rotom comes in. We get a nice clean burn on there, which is going to burn anything on the team. If it burns the Cloister, that's great. I don't think they switch the Cloister in on a Rotom anyway, or the Cypher. I think they stay in and go for a Fusion Bolt. Fusion Bolt comes through. Yep, they are going to go straight for the Fusion Bolt, which is going to do a nice chunk of damage to us. We go for a Will-O-Wisp, and that is going to be great. It's going to do loads of damage. Not really. It's, it's going to do residual damage every turn, but it means they're not going to do loads of damage this next turn. So the fact that they outsped us as well tells me they are max speed at least, and they're not a bulky variant. So we should be all right just going into good old-fashioned... Uh, Infernape, to be honest with you. So let's go for a Volt Switch, first and foremost. They go for another Fusion Bolt. It's not going to do much damage this time. I'm wondering whether they're Choice Scarfed or not. That's what I'm wondering. Are they Choice Scarfed? Maybe. So let's withdraw Rotom. Like so. We got the Sticky Web up. So now we can go Infernape. And we should be able to finish off the rest of their team with Infernape, I'm guessing. I hope so. So we're going to Infernape now, they get hurt by the burn. And then we'll simply Terror Electric and uh, we will go for a Swords Dance. I don't see any reason not to. So we Terror Electric like so. We're going to show this Cure in Black who the real Master of Lightning is. And that is of course Infernape. Looking amazing. There we go. Terror Electric is here! As now, we can go for a Swords Dance, get our attack up to sky high levels. We can just mock Punch this thing in the face. They go for a Fusion Bolt. Um, they're not Scarf because we do outspeed them there. And they go for a Fusion Bolt, which isn't going to do much damage at all. Which is fantastic. Now, of course, we have to be careful. I'm going to go for a Mock Punch here. Mock Punch comes through. Cleanly takes out the Cure and Black. Which is amazing. Infernate coming through for us right now. What a legend. In comes whatever that is, which is going to be the Gengar. Now, it gets caught in the Sticky Web, so we should outspeed it unless they're Scarfed. So we go for a fire... Mm, let's go for a Thunder Punch. Screw it. Thunder Punch comes through. We are not Scarfed. And we get to take them out cleanly in one hit, right? They're Sashed. Ah, they're Focus Sashed. Good to know. Good to know. That's kind of put a damper on things. So they go for a Mean Look. Brother, I wasn't switching out anyway. I, I don't mind not being able to escape. So let's go for a Fire Punch now. Just to switch it up a bit, just in case. Fire Punch comes through. Takes out the Gengar. And even if they curse body us here, it doesn't matter because Fire Punch is not what we need to win. It was probably better for me to go for a Fire Punch anyway in the first place. In comes whatever that is. Is that Cloyster? Yeah, Cloyster comes in. Gets caught in the sticky webs. We don't think... I don't think they'll be focus sashed on this thing if Gengar was sashed. But let's go for a Thunder Punch anyway. And they may Shell Smash. So Thunder Punch comes through. If they are sashed, then they're going to Shell Smash on us. But unfortunately for us, they are sashed. Um, which is unfortunate. So the <laughs> focus on Gengar and Cloyster, they go for the Shell Smash. Despite the fact that we've already shown we have Mark Punch. Maybe they don't know Mark Punch's priority. I don't know. But anyway, they're going to get all that boost from the Shell Smash, which is absolutely terrifying. If they can get past this Infernape, it's terrifying anyway. Um, they kind of have to go for an Ice Shard here, which probably won't KO. So let's go for a Mark Punch real quick. Mark Punch comes through. Down goes the Cloyster, and Terror Electric Infernape is proving to be a menace to this team, I will say. In comes uh, the Cypher. There it is, it's landed as well. I love it when they land like that, that's pretty cool. So let's go for a Thunder Punch first and foremost, and if they do Terror, then so be it. So they're going to Terror, they are going to Terror. What type are they going to Terror into though? Are they going to go Ground? Or Grass to resist? Flying? That's not going to help you against the Thunder Punch. It'll have helped you against the Fire Punch if I'd have went for Fire Punch, but I didn't. I went for Thunder Punch. As there we go, the Terror Electric Thunder Punch is going to come through and destroy this Cypher's life. So that is going to be the game. G, G to my opponent, whatever your name is. Infernape truly popped off that game. What a game. Infernape really snowballed out of control for my opponent in that one. You love to see it. The next battle is a good one against Moises, and Infernape shows why it's the hero of the video once again. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun, Moises. So they're going to lead off with Lycanroc, which is a good lead, as we lead off with our Scarves, the Ribombe. Not a bad lead. I did kind of expect them to lead with this, but I was like, you know what, screw it. I'm going to lead and go for the Sticky Webs anyway. And we do have speed, obviously, so we can't get taunted. 
So the sneaky webs are up, and they're up for good, apparently, unless they've got defog on Neuburn. They go for a fire fang, that's going to definitely take us down. Um, not to our sash, though, as uh, they probably go for an Acceleroc here, in which case I'm better off switching out, but kind of want to just go for a Moonblast just to break a sash, so I'm going to do that. They don't go for the Acceleroc, which is great, does about half, lowers the special attack, as they go for a Fire Fang again, which does take out Ribombe. So, are they banded? They can't be banded. That would have that would have got, took it down to our sash if it was banded, surely. So, um, we can go Infernape here, we can just Mark Punch. I don't see any reason not to, so let's go for it. Son Gohan comes in. Like so. Nice and shiny. Gotta love it. We go for a mock punch here 100% of the time. And that takes out the Lycan Rock in one clean hit. Which is great. So Inferno gets a KO. Which is fantastic. Fan bloody tastic. Vaporeon comes in. Which is great. Like so. Uh, gets caught in the sticky webs. Which is alright. Now they probably go for a Scold here. I kind of want to Terra Electric Thunder Punch this thing. I really want to Terra Electric Thunder Punch this thing. So I think I will do just that because if we're going to use Terra Electric Thunder Punch for something on their team, it's going to be this. So we Terra Electric like so. And a Terra Electric boosted, Iron Fist boosted, Punching Glove boosted, Thunder Punch from an Infernape should definitely take out this Vaporeon. Even if it, well, unless they're physically defensive, in which case they might live on a sliver of HP. So we go for a Thunder Punch like so. And Infernape comes through with the nearly KO on the Vaporeon. They go for a Scold. Can they not burn us? That'd be great. No burn. Absolutely amazing. So, if we assume they're going to switch out into Pormot here, we should go for either a Fire Punch or a Swords Dance. I'm going to go for a Fire Punch, expecting the uh, switch. They do switch out. What are they going to go into? They could go Superior to get the speed boost. They go into Pormot, though, which is fantastic. So, Pormot comes through. Gets caught in the Sticky Webs, which is amazing, which means this Mark Punch the next turn will KO. So, Fire Punch comes through like so. And that does a clean half, which is amazing. We do actually outspeed, so we can just go for another Fire Punch here, no problem. Fire Punch comes through. Down goes the Pormot, which is amazing. So with Pormot gone, there'll be no more Revival Blessings or any BS like that. So Period comes in, that's a good switch, because it's going to get a speed boost from the Sticky Webs, for a start. There we go, speed boost is there. Um, which means we have to switch out. And I'm leaning towards the Goldengo. I think I will go Goldengo here. It can definitely take a Leaf Storm, which is probably coming our way. And we'll keep the Inferno around because it'll be good taking out our Gengar, taking out that Vaporeon. Um, and then potentially taking out this thing if we can get it paralyzed or something. They go for a Leaf Storm. That's going to do no damage, obviously. But they could Terra this next turn, which we have to be wary of. Our Bloom pops. Let's go for a Make It Rain anyway, just in case. They do go for a Leaf Storm again, though. Which is going to nearly take KO us, but it's fine. As uh, we go for a Make It Rain like so... And that's going to do a lot of damage to the Superior to the point where Infernape can finish it off with a Mark Punch, which is amazing. So I'm going to go for another Make It Rain just in case. They actually go for another Leaf Storm, which is fine. We simply bring in the Infernape once again and go for a Mark Punch. That's all we need to do. They're at plus six. I'm not even afraid. Not even afraid, because what are they going to do? Vacuum Wave us? I don't think so. So we'll go Infernape now. Sun Gohan comes in, looking all Super Saiyan and stuff, which is crazy cool. And uh, we go straight for a Mark Punch here. No doubt in my mind that that's going to work out. They're going to Terra. Oh, please let me Terra Ghost randomly. That'd be really annoying if they were. Terra Ghost. The Terra Stella. That's fine. So they just wasted their Terra because they're going to go down to a Mark Punch anyway. We already showed we had the Mark Punch earlier. So we go for it. That's going to take out the Superior, which is fantastic. So with Superior gone, we have a Vaporeon and a Gengar to take care of, as well as a Noivern. I'm going to keep Infernape around because I feel like it, that we do need Infernape to take out the Gengar and stuff. They bring in the Noivern though because they know it outspeeds us. So it's good play. We go into Rotom here all the time. And we try and paralyze this thing. That's what we have to do. If we can paralyze it, then we'll be golden. So we're going to Bosch real quick, the Rotom Wash. They go for a Boom Burst, which is going to sting, but not really. And then are they going to be Throat Spray as well? They're not Throat Spray. We get Leftovers Recovery before they had the Protose Pop, so that's great. Um, so now we try and paralyze this thing with Thunder Wave. They may drop a Draco. They go for another Boom Burst to try and get some damage off, which is fine. We go for a Thunder Wave. There we go. So there is a good chance that even though they're paralyzed, they st still outspeed us because Noven's very fast. Um, but I actually think they won't do that. I don't think they do that. I think what we should do is sack something off here. So I'm going to go for a Volt Switch, because it's my only viable option, really. 
Yeah, they, they, they do out. They do, we do outspeed them, which is good. So we get some chip damage off on them with the Volt Switch, which tells me that maybe Inferno could take this thing out of the Thunder. Um, let's go for a Cyclozar Switch. Like so. Ferrari can come in. There we go. They go for a Boom Burst again. It's going to do about half. Yeah, just over half to us. Now we can drop a Draco, no problem. And then we can eject back out. So we'll go for a Draco. We do miss. So Draco miss strikes again. It's very unfortunate. As they go for a Dragon Pulse, that's going to KO us. That's unfortunate for Cyclozar. But you know what? It's not the end of the world. It is not the end of the world. As we can simply go into Rotom again and go for a Volt Switch once more. Weakening this thing to the point where Infernape can come in and, and Thunderbolt. A uh, Thunder Punch. So um, we'll go for a Volt Switch again into Landorus. So the Volt Switch comes through. Bit of, a bit more chip to the Noivern. This tells me that Thunder Punch will KO from here. And we'll go into Landorus real quick like this. Great Stripe comes in. Takes a Boom Burst to the face, right? We get the Intimidate off, not that it matters. They go for a Boom Burst. That's going to definitely do a lot of damage. It does half. But we do outspeed them. And we've disappeared for some reason. So our best option is to get the Stealth Rocks up to break a potential Sash on that Gengar. So that's what I'm going to do. There we go, Stealth Rocks are up. And then they can just take us out with a Boom Burst real quick. Boom Burst comes through. Oh, wow, we lived. Um, I guess just so that it can't roost, we'll taunt it. There we go, no roosting. As uh, they go for a Boom Burst again. Dragon Pulse. They go for a Dragon Pulse to take us out, that's fine. So we Lander has gone down. We still have the Rotom in the back, but I firmly believe that unless they have Quick Attack on the Vaporeon or randomly Sucker Punch on the... Gengar. I think Infernape cleans up here. So let's go into Sun Gohan. There we go. We go straight for a Thunder Punch 100% of the time here. That should take out the uh, Noivern from there. It is neutral. It does take it out. Nice. It was a crit. I don't think the crit mattered. Noivern goes cleanly down, which is fantastic. Vaporeon comes in. Nice and damaged. Gets caught in the sticky webs. Gets caught in the... Uh, Gets caught in the Stealth Rocks. And now all we need to do is go for a Mock Punch here. So we'll go for a Mock Punch. The reason we go for a Mock Punch is because they might have Quick Attack. <laughs> and I don't want to really ruin my Quick Attack Vaporeon. So Mock Punch comes through. Down goes the Vaporeon. And the great thing is even on low on HP. So even if they had Rocky Helm on that. Because of the Punching Glove, we're not making contact. So it's not going to do any damage. So Gengar comes in, the reliable partner. Get some Stealth Rocks chip and the Sticky Webs, of course. And provided they weren't scarfed, because they'd be at neutral speed if that was the case, we should be able to take this thing out of a Thunder Punch. So Thunder Punch comes through, boosted by Terra, Iron Fist, Punching Glove, should take out the Gengar from there. It doesn't! And they curse body my Thunder Punch! And they go for a Sludge Bomb. So even though it... <laughs> Gengar's got some bulk. <laughs> Probably the frailest Pokemon in the game, and it's got it lives a Thunder Punch after Stealth Rock. That's hilarious. Anyway, we'll go Rotom here. And Rotom can definitely take a Sludge Bomb slash outspeed. So this made for a pretty good Infernape game, to be fair. So we'll go for a Volt Switch like so. Volt Switch comes through. And down goes the Gengar, which is fantastic. So GG to my opponent, Moises. That was a pretty fun one. Pretty fun one. What a game. Infernape may not have won us the game, but it played a crucial role in doing so. The next game is against D, and once again, you guessed it, Infernape pops off. But can we win the game? And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun, D. So they're going to lead off with Nine Tails, as I expected, as I'm going to lead off with Gold Rush, the Gold Engo. So I could just go for a Make It Rain. They, For all they know, we could be Choice Scarfed, and we could just one-shot this Nine Tails straight away. So they probably switch out, but I'm still going to go for a Make It Rain anyway, just in case they don't. They do withdraw the Nine Tails, though, fearing the Choice Scarf, Make It Rain, slash just KOing through Aurora Veil anyway. And they go into my low tick, which is a very good switch. So Make It Rain comes through. Does a nice bit of damage to the Milotic. Might even... Well, they know I'm Choice... They know I'm not Choice Scarf. Why did I think... Why did this... Mm. Anyway, they know I'm not Choice Scarf because I float in the air of an air balloon at the start. Never mind. Ignore me. Anyway, let's go into Rotom real quick. Rotom can definitely take care of this Milotic. Well, not take care of it, but it can go for a Volt Switch. Or paralyze it or something like that. So we're going to Bosh. The Rotom Wash. They go for a Scold, which is going to do minimal damage to us. Might burn us, but it probably won't. It doesn't burn us, which is fantastic. So, uh, they have Shell Bell, which is an interesting uh, item to have. 
They must not have been able to find the leftovers, but that's fine. So uh, we get the leftovers recovery, just rubbing it in the faces that we have the superior residual healing item. And I'm going to go for a Volt Switch. Um, they do, in fact, stay in, so they probably go for a recover here. In which case, I'm probably better off going into maybe Infernape. Infernape could be a good one. In fact, I am going to go Infernape, because if, if they won't go for a Scold again on a Rotom, that's for sure. So we're going to Infernape, nice and shiny. And um, they go for a Mirror Coat, which does nearly take us out. So that is scary right there. As they get a nice chunk of HP back with the Shell Bell. So, um, probably going to go for a Terra Electric Thunder Punch right now. They do withdraw the Milotic. What are they going to go into? Dash Bun. That's, that's fair enough. If they're expecting a close combat, they go for the Dash Bun. So we Terra Electric which is obviously going to not do anything really. I mean, th this dash is very physically defensive. So they can definitely take a Thunder Punch and they might have Rocky Helmet. So we might be screwed here with the Infernape. So we'll go for a Terra Electric Thunder Punch boosted by Iron Fist and Punching Glove. And it does a nice third of the HP, which is fantastic. So if they're leftovers, which they are, then that's a problem. So they do have leftovers. I'm just going to Swords Dance just in case. Just in case they don't attack and they go for a Wish or something. So we Swords Dance. They go for a Wish. Yeah, they went for a Wish. Cool. So with the Wish up, we can now safely go for a... Um, I should have put a Drain Punch on this instead of Mark Punch. That might have worked a bit better. But uh, either way, this still works out. Mark Punch is still really useful. So we'll go for a Thunder Punch. They do withdraw the Dash Bun. What are they going to go into to take a Thunder Punch though on their team? Lucario? I don't think Lucario takes this. I really don't think Lucario takes this as we go for a Thunder Punch. And that is going to cleanly KO the Lucario, which is fantastic. So with Lucario down, we have five Pokemon left to take care of. And they don't have a single bit of priority on there unless they're Ice Shard on the lower Nine Tails. Reuniclus comes in. Good one. Definitely a good one. It's slow, though, and it's not exactly the bulkiest thing in the world anymore with Power Creep. However, Infernape was part of the metagame with this thing being a bulky monster, so let's go for another Thunder Punch. It should KO at plus two. Like I said, Punching Glove and Iron Fist, it should definitely KO. Doesn't KO the Runiclus, and they go for a Trick Room. That's just kind of put a damper on things. So the Twisted Dimensions. Let's go for a Mock Punch just to see if it KOs. It does! As the Reuniclus goes down. So we're Reuniclus down for the count. Mark Punch taking care of them. We're in a decent position now of Infernape. The snow does stop as well. Pre Marina comes in. Are they going to Terra? They probably Terra into a Terra Steel or something. So then again, they outspeed us. So that's probably what they're thinking. Going to switch out into Rotom here because I want to preserve my Infernape. It can still be useful for taking out the Pre Marina and the Milotic. Um, and the Ninetales if we get the Sticky Webs up. They go for a Sparkling Aria. Which is fine. And then we just simply go for a Volt Switch. And, and because the Trick Room's up... Oh, they have the Throat Spray as well. Nice. Good play. Good play. So, because they have the Throat Spray, they've become a massive threat in the Trick Room. However, because we're faster, we go last because of the Trick Room. So we can get a free Volt Switch into Ribombe. As the Energy Ball does take us out, unfortunately. So... It was a crit. We were especially defensive, so it probably did matter a little bit, but I was pretty confident we'd take an energy ball there, but I guess not. So anyway, Ribombe comes in. They haven't got any other Trick Room setters now that Reuniclus is gone, so once that's gone, done and dusted, we can just go for a Sticky Web. So let's go for a Sticky Web now. We've got a Focus Sash, so we can definitely take a hit. Moonblast comes through. That's going to sting. Takes us right down to our Sash. And there it is. The Sash is going to pop. We go for a Sticky Webs. Now, now that Ninetales is no longer faster than Infernape. And uh, the Twisted Dimensions do return to normal, which is fantastic. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go for a Moonblast again. Just to get some damage off. They haven't gone for an Aqua Jet, so they must not have it, which is great. Psychic Noise is going to take us out. But now that they're weakened, we can bring Infernape in again and be a real menace to this team. That's for sure. So um, let's go into Infernape now. Like so. Infernape comes in. There's no hazards or anything like that to stop us from coming in. Let's go for a Thunder Punch real quick. And I don't think they Terra here. I think they switch out. No, they don't switch out. They, I thought they switched into Dash Bun, but I guess it gets two shot from where it's at. So 
Primarina goes down to a Thunder Punch, meaning Infernape's took out three Pokemon, which is insane. Ninetales does come in. However, the sticky webs are a thing. They get caught in the sticky webs like so. And I think what they do here is they go for an Aurora Veil. So I kind of want to go for a Swords Dance because I'm pretty sure Swords Dance... Just go for a Fire Punch. Screw it. Just go for the attack. It does a lot of damage as they go for an Aurora Veil. So maybe I should have Swords Danced. I don't know. Maybe I should put Brick Break on this thing. <laughs> uh, anyway, we're going for a Fire Punch here. It always takes out the Ninetales. They withdraw the Ninetales though. Are they going to go into the Dash Bun? That's a good play if they do. Dash Bun comes in because it's immune to fire. Why didn't I see this one coming? So they get caught in the sticky webs, which is great. And we go for a Fire Punch, which obviously doesn't work because of their well-baked body, which is going to boost their defense sharply. We can still use Infernape to take out that Melotic, so I don't want to let it go down just yet. So I think my best play here is to go into the Goldengo. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. Infernape outspeeds the Ninetales, can still take that out with Fire Punch, and can still do a lot of damage to the Milote with Thunder Punch. After the Aurora Veil's gone, of course. So we're going to Goldengo now. They go for a Play Rough, breaking our Bloom, but it doesn't really matter because they haven't got any Ground-type Pokemon on their team, or Ground-type moves, I don't think, unless the Milotic has Earthquake for some reason. But it's fine. Let's go for a Make It Rain. I don't see any reason not to. So they're going to Terror. What type are they going to Terror into, though? I'm guessing fire or steel. One of the two. Steel. Okay, so steel's a good one. They're probably going to go for a wish here. Which would make sense. We go for a make it rain though. That's going to still do a decent chunk of damage to them, even for Aurora Veil. And now I'm like, do I want to go for a focus miss or what? So they go for a wish. And they probably, if I had to guess, they either stay in... Or they go into the Milotic right now. I think I'm going to go into Landorus, expecting them to stay in. Get the Intimidate off to stop the Play Rough from doing so much damage. And then we go for Stealth Rocks to get that Ninetales into KO range. They withdraw the Dash button. What are they going to go into to take a potential Focus Blast? Milotic makes sense. Under the Aurora Veil, Milotic is pretty much unbreakable. So they get caught in the sticky webs, which does in fact give them a competitive boost, right? Yes, so competitive is going to come through for them. Um, however, I don't want them going for a re mm, Then again, they got a wish, so they're not going to go for a recover. The Aurora Veil does wear off, though. So let's just go for a Stealth Rock real quick. Stealth Rocks come through. I think Stealth Rocks are really important for taking care of this Milotic, that's for sure. So uh, they go for a Scold, which is going to take us out because of the competitive boost and being stabbed. Salandrus goes down, but he got the Stealth Rock up, which means that Ninetales is no more. And now, I think we're in a really good position with Infernape. I'm pretty confident that Thunder Punch will KO here. Pretty confident in the fact. So, Infernape comes in, we go for a Thunder Punch 100% of the time here. Thunder Punch comes through. I'm pretty confident it'll KO, I'm not gonna lie. As it doesn't. Oh, but we do get the paralysis, which is nice. So if they get fully paralyzed, which they didn't, and they go for an ice beam and chaos. So you know what? Infernape did really well this game. Definitely did really well. However, this is a tough game because now that dash bun pretty much walls the crap out of us. So we'll go into Ferrari, the Cyclizar. And since it has a sliver of HP left, we'll go for a knockoff just to get rid of its item and also just take it out. They withdraw the Milotic. What are they going to go into? The Ninetales? Dash Bun. Dash Bun makes sense, I guess. It's going to get caught in the sticky webs and get some Stealth Rock chip, like so. And then we go for a knockoff, which should do a de de decent bit of damage. Um, knocks off their leftovers, which is good, good, good. And the snow does stop. So now we just simply go for a Draco Meteor here and eject pack out into our Goldengo. So there we go. Draco Meteor comes through, takes out the Dash Bun. No problems there. The Ninetales dies to Stealth Rock, I believe. I could be wrong now. And the Milotic doesn't want to take a hit. So we're going to go into Goldengo now. There's the Eject Pack switching us out. As we get a free switch into Goldengo. On whatever they decide to bring in next. If they bring the Milotic in, we outspeed and KO with Shadow Ball. If they bring the Ninetales in, we just KO with Shadow Ball. So Milotic comes in. 
like so. Get some Stealth Rock and Sticky Webs damage, giving them a competitive boost, but it's fine. And then we simply go for a Shadow Ball to take this thing out, which is fantastic. And they forfeit, so we got them to forfeit, which is amazing. So GGD, that was a fun one. Shame you didn't allow us to finish the game, but it is what it is. A narrow victory for Infernape and Co, for sure, but a victory nonetheless. The damage Infernape did early on definitely helped in making them forfeit. You gotta love it. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you made it this far, then why not subscribe so you don't miss the next one? And feel free to use the team using the code on screen now. And with that being said, I'll see you all in a bit.